Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. What name is it talking about? The name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. Glory to God. Aren't you glad you bowed your knee while you were on the earth? Amen. <laughs> to the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Every knee has to bow to the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Jesus himself said this. He said, Behold, I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's Luke 10, 19. And I like this. Isaiah, let's turn to Isaiah chapter uh, 59. Verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And I want to show you something that this is just fascinating. Chris Holloway showed it to me uh, Sunday. He had it on his uh, iPhone. And so we blew it up. I want to put it on the screen uh, for you. But it is the, uh, and I'm supposed to have a little pointer here somewhere, but it, hang on just a second, y'all. The little pointer uh, ran away, but we'll work without it. Uh, let's turn the lights off. Oh, here it is. The green button. The green button. Turn the lights off. And I want you to see this. This is the Hebrew for the name of Jesus. The Hebrew for Jesus is Yeshua. Now I want you to notice, uh, say, no it works, I hadn't tried yet. I want you to notice that here, here it is, Yeshua. Now the uh, Hebrew goes from the right to the left when you read it. So there's the, the letter, it starts with Yod and it has uh, uh, the other, uh, that Shin, uh, well you can see them anyway. <laughs> Yeah. So this is the name of Yeshua. Now I want you to look at the similarity between that and the palm of a hand. You see the thumb, there's that first letter, Yod. And you, you see these three, uh, the three middle fingers relate to that second letter in the Hebrew. That uh, little finger relates to that. And then the Y looking letter there, the last letter in the name of Yeshua, the Hebrew letter in the name of Yeshua relates to this part of the hand. So the fascinating thing about this is, uh, you can turn the light back on Joe, but I think you're getting this that God inscribed the name of Yeshua Jesus on the palms of our hands folks. <laughs> Glory to God, it's there. Whew, that's powerful, isn't it? You know, when, if someone was coming at you, an enemy, and you were wanting them to stop, what would be, you, you just do this without even thinking about it. You'd say, stop, hold it. You know when you do that, you're throwing the name of Jesus up there. <laughs> you're, you're saying, Jesus, stop in Jesus' name. That's actually written on the palm of your hand in the Hebrew. I mean, this doesn't happen by happenstance, folks. This shows what a mighty creator we have. <laughs> None of this is by accident. This is God that did this. He's inscribed the name of Jesus on the palms of our hands. And so this kind of brings more meaning to this Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Hallelujah. He said, wait a minute, devil. You stop right there. And when you throw those hands up, I'm telling you, he's confronted with the name of Jesus. And every time we lift up our hands in church to worship God, we're lifting up the name of Jesus. Doesn't that bring more meaning to uh, what Paul said when he said, lifting up holy hands. So we're, we're, we're lifting up those hands that have Yeshua inscribed on them. We're lifting up the name of Jesus when we lift up the hands. Also that first letter in the Hebrew, um, uh, Yod, the first letter in Yeshua, that's also the word for uh, giving thanks. And 
So when we give thanks, that literally means, giving thanks literally means in the Hebrew to lift up your hands. So when we're in here lifting up our hands, we're giving thanks to God. That's the way he interprets that. And we're lifting up the name of Jesus. And when we throw those hands up against the enemy, that's to him. You stop right there. When he's trying to come in like a flood, you lift up the name. In the name of Jesus, I bind you in Jesus' name. So you have authority to use the name of Jesus. Amen. You have authority to cast out in Jesus' name. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Amen. Glory to God. Well, uh, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Jesus said in Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Amen. You, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a bottle as the Spirit comes in, as we allow the Holy Spirit, as Jesus, just to fill us with the Holy Spirit. It's like when you take a bottle and you hold it under water and you hear that noise, you know, where the, the, uh, the water is displacing the air and the air has have, is having to go out. You know, have you ever done that, held a, Coke, a Coca-Cola bottle under a, a water and you hear that noise as it, the water goes in? Uh, that, that's, uh, that's what happens is you allow yourself to be filled with the Holy Spirit that water of the Spirit is coming in and the air of fear has to go out. There's no room for that spirit of fear anymore if you allow yourself to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And I've heard some people when they're first time they ever release a heavenly language, you know, or uh, they, that, that the Holy Spirit's coming in and you hear them going, oh, oh bop, bop, bop. <laughs> you know, they begin speaking in a language nobody taught them they don't understand. I've seen people... That's the way they begin with the speaking in other languages, uh, which is a physical, uh, a part of the physical evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? So we need the power of the Holy Spirit uh, this day more than ever in these uh, end times that we're living in. And then let's look at 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. And I want to, we're going to read about God's love. I'm telling you, His love is powerful. He is love. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, there is no fear in love. We're talking about tonight in the face of fear. What do we do in the face of fear? There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love we love him because he first loves, loved us. Amen. So we need to understand God loves us with a perfect love. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, we don't have to be afraid of the unknown. I read a story about a lady. She was, crossing, uh, she was in a, a boat crossing Lake Michigan at night. And there was lightning and thunder and rain. And she looked out there and she saw all these rocks sticking up in Lake Michigan. Michigan, and she began to feel nervous about that. And she asked the captain. She said, "Do do you know, uh, do you know where all the rocks are in this lake?" The captain said, "No, I don't know where all the rocks are in this lake, in this lake, but I know where it's safe." And you know, as you sail through life, you're going to see a lot of rocks out there, and some you will know how to avoid, and others will come upon you like a surprise but the important thing is to know where it is safe Jesus knows the safe way if we'll keep our eyes on Jesus and follow him and let his word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path then we know where it's safe glory to God we don't have to fear the unknown because we're following the one who knows the unknown even we don't know it he, he knows Glory to God. There's an old story about uh, Martin Luther that is well worth repeating. And it was in uh, days of uncertainty and, and a crisis in his life. He was standing firm for uh, a conviction that he believed in. 
and he refused to surrender. You know, he had a lot of people coming against him in that uh, Reformation where he was bringing back to the church salvation by grace through faith. And he had a lot of uh, religious adversaries coming against him and he was confronted fiercely by a, a powerful political religious type opponent. And he, uh, the, the opponent uh, 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 asked him, he said, uh, uh, do you know what you're doing, what power you are defying? And do, do you expect uh, any, this man told him, said, do you expect any force mentioning to take up arms and come to your help? This man was trying to intimidate Martin Luther. And uh, Martin Luther responded, no, he said quietly. Uh, I, I don't expect uh, anything like that. But, and so the dignitary yelled at him, said, well, then where will you be? This, this man that had come to challenge him. And so Luther answered in words that seemed to go to the very heart of things. He said, I shall be where I have always been, in the hands of Almighty God. Amen. We need to realize God loves us with a perfect love. And He'll never leave us and never forsake us. We're in His arms, and He's all-powerful. He's the creator of heaven and earth. There's no one more powerful than Him. Glory to God. And then we need to be sure, you know, the devil tries to work on our minds. That spirit of fear tries to work on our minds. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul wrote this. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God. And do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We need to learn to think the way the Bible tells us to think. Think in line with the Word of God. The Word of God gives us advice that's diametrically opposed to the advice of the worldview, uh, of the world, many, many times. If, if, if God even, he does, his arithmetic's different from the world. He says, give and it'll be given to you. That, the world doesn't tell you that. The world says, get all you can, can all you get, and guard the can. But, but Jesus says, give and it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running together. Well, men given to your bosom for what measure you meet, will be measured back to you. So, uh, God adds through subtraction. You know, we, we have to learn to think the way he thinks rather than the way the world tells us to think because he's supernatural. He's all powerful. Glory to God. And that's where that faith comes in. They, they accused the uh, apostles during the book of Acts, they accused them in one place of turning the world upside down. So they've come, turn the world upside down. Thank God, Jesus turns the world upside down. When we, but, but I tell you what, you'll wind up on top if you'll stick with him. Believe in him. Hallelujah. Now, one of the things, uh, we need to really not let the enemy come in and torment us in, in our minds with a spirit of fear. Too many of us have been crucified between two thieves, regret for yesterday and fear of tomorrow. And so there, there's no need to let any one of those two thieves have place in our life. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And he says, he says, don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about its own things. If we'll spend time seeking the kingdom, I said this last Sunday, if we'll spend time seeking the kingdom of God today, he'll take care of tomorrow. Amen. That doesn't mean you, you don't make plans. You know, everybody makes plans, but you gotta, we gotta live our lives one day at a time. We can't spend our time worrying about tomorrow all the time because that just drains our strength to live what, and do what God wants us to do today. It doesn't accomplish anything. We have to rebuke that spirit of fear, trust in God with all our heart, as we shared tonight in Proverbs 3, and lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge Him. One translation says, in all our ways make Him known, make Jesus known. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You keep lifting up that name of Jesus, making Christ known, that spirit of fear can't hang around. 
He doesn't like to hear the name of Jesus because he has to bend his knee to that name. Glory to God. I remember uh, years ago I heard Pastor John Osteen, he joined a health club. Tommy, y'all joined a health club recently. <laughs> uh, Pastor John Osteen, you know, Joel's dad, he, he joined a health club and he said he went in that health club and he walked up and down the, all that equipment and in the locker room just laying hands on all the equipment in the name of Jesus and asking God to bless it and asking God to bless everybody there. And he said everybody there was staring at him. And he said, I'll tell you one thing, I wasn't there for five minutes before they all knew I was a Christian and I believed in Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I, I believe that's the way we should be. We, we're carriers of the name of Jesus. And he's with us and everywhere we go, we need to bear the name of Jesus and make him known in all our ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. And we don't have to be afraid about the path he's, he's directing us in because he's with us. And God, if God is for you, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Praise God. Yet in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Praise the Lord. You're more than conquerors through Jesus who loves you with a perfect love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, uh, we just thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, that it does not return void. Hallelujah. Lord, you're always uh, with us. Your presence is always with us. Lord, thank you that uh, we are storing the word of God up in our heart. Your word says, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so, Lord, we thank you for the entrance of the word of God that's in our hearts. Jesus, you said the words that I speak are spirit and they are life in John 6, 63. We thank you, Lord, that these scriptures that we've studied tonight, they're in our hearts. They're living in us. They're breathing. They're alive. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We just declare that every one of us here, those that are watching by internet, we're leaving. Uh, when we leave this church tonight, we have more faith than we had when we came in because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And we're not only going to hear it coming in, now we're going to speak it forth to others. Glory to God. I want to ask everyone with your head still bowed, eyes closed, in an attitude of prayer with a reverence for God, just to look into your hearts. We ask those that are watching by internet to do this as well and ask yourself, have I, really, have I truly accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior? I'm telling you, God did, Jesus did the hard part when he took our judgment on that cross. He took our place on that cross. He didn't die for his sins. He died for our sins. We come to God not on the basis of our merits, but on the basis of the merits of Jesus Christ and what he did in that wonderful sacrifice that he accomplished for us on the cross at Calvary. He did the hard part. He suffered for our sins so that we could be forgiven and have eternal life and have a new beginning so we could be born again. Amen. Glory. Thank God for the new birth. All God requires of us is a decision. Jesus has done. He's the one that suffered. So many people don't turn to the Lord because they think that they're too weak to be able to serve God. Let me tell you, God's not limited by your weaknesses but he is limited by our decisions or choices. And all he requires is you to make a decision to turn to him with your whole heart and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Romans chapter 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you haven't uh, invited Jesus into your heart. Uh, I want you to just lift your hand up high right where you are. Just lift it up high if you haven't done this. If you're watching by internet, just lift your hand up high. God sees your hand wherever you are. Whether you're in a country on the other side of the world or right down the street here in Omaha, Texas, God sees your hand. Amen. You know what we're going to do? We're going to say a little prayer together. Uh, it'll take about a minute. I said a prayer like this 31 years ago and uh, God changed my life forever. It didn't take but about a minute. I wished I'd have done it a lot sooner in life, but I'm so glad I did. 
You know, it's, it's all about decision. Let's all stand to our feet and let's say this prayer, even if you've been saved for many years, let's say this prayer to encourage that person within the hearing of our voices that may be saying it for the very first time. We know we have uh, many people that watch by internet. Uh, let's say this together. Internet audience, say this with us. If you'll say this with sincerity of heart, you'll be saved. You'll be born again. You'll have eternal life. Heaven, heaven will, some of heaven will come to dwell in you. Let's say this together. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. Jesus, I accept you now and forever as my personal Lord and Savior. I open the door of my heart and invite you in. I ask you to take charge of my life. Give me a new beginning. It's in your name I pray. The name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. And praise God. You know, if, you're, if you said that prayer for the first time you're watching by internet, I just want to encourage you to, uh, if you go to glorychurch.com, you may already be on that website. Uh, there's a, a praise report button. If you would click on that, let us hear from you. We just want to rejoice with the angels in heaven, heaven over what God is doing in your life and, and just give Him thanks and, and pray over your life. Also, for all internet viewers, we have seven free books available to you. If you'll click on the free books button, you'll receive instructions on how to get those absolutely free of charge. We have them in paperback form on this table as you go out on the right for those that are here. Books that are, are, are free to everyone and even if you've read them you want to take one and give one to somebody else, feel free to do that. That's what we wrote them for to get them in people's hands to bless them. Hallelujah. Praise God. I really feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in here. Amen. Uh, I'm going to step down here and if anyone needs personal prayer we invite you just to come up to the front and we're going to